Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my thing here on YouTube where I rumble about making 3D games in Godot. Uh, a big announcement earlier this week, obviously, Godot 4 Alpha is officially out. Um, there is some hype about it uh, within the community, but if you're like me and you've been using the dev builds of Godot 4 for any length of time, you'll know that Alpha is still struggling with the big tickets. For example, and, and I'm stupefied as to why they didn't fix it for this release, uh, there's a deal-breaking bug in the animation tree that messes up the scaling of the root bone on, uh, on Skeleton 3D node when blending, adding uh, or mixing animations. I mean, look at this. See the issue? I really don't get why they didn't merge the fix into the alpha, because there already is a fix. It's been there for weeks. I'm using it all the time. There are other significant issues too. Uh, notably, Godot 4 Alpha will not read materials created in uh, previous builds of Godot 4. This is because the uh, PVRTC format was removed in alpha intentionally, so the parser is unable to decode the material values encoded in the previous versions of Godot 4. This is not a bug, it's a design decision and it basically means that you have to recreate all materials in alpha from scratch. Okay, this is official. You can try and remove the .godot folder, which may help, although if you have a more complex project, it's probably going to cause uh, more harm than good, so just keep that in mind. Oh, and subscribe to the channel, by the way. And if you're an Unreal Engine worshipper, then why are you here? <laughs> I'm joking, I'm happy you're here. And I'm wishing you a pleasant transition to Godot. Okay, moving on. I have spent a number of hours, if not days, working on my uh, character animation. This is my animation tree today. Yeah, I know, sky is the limit, right? The biggest challenge I've been grappling with was to stabilize the character's torso when uh, rapidly changing direction. I'm using the 3D blend space to blend walking and running animations. Uh, so I will subtract the strength of the WASD keys, so, um, right from left and forward from backward, and I will feed that into a direction vector, which is 3D, and I will use the X and Z of this direction vector to control the blend space position. Uh, here's the blend space graph. The problem is, if you quickly change direction from left to right while also moving forward, which you will do nearly all the time in a game like this, in your blend space you will have to pass by the animation that's in the middle, and it's going to be a forward movement animation with a different pose, one that's kind of leaned forward. So, as you can see here, quick blending from side to side is giving me this annoying jitter because I'm upright, then I'm leaned forward, and then I'm upright again very quickly. One way around this, uh, which is what I did, is to make uh, the torso still. So uh, lock the root bone and possibly also the hip bone and maybe even the first spine bone. So basically make the torso stiff. But don't leave it like this because if you do, uh, it will look like this, like a, like a toy game. It completely loses its natural um, realistic look. Instead, you can transpose animation data back on to the stiff root bone to reanimate it, so to speak. And you can do that in code. It's simple. You can apply any rotation, position, or scale um, to a skeletal bone of your choice in code. That's the beauty of this new um, skeleton system in Godot 4. But where do I grab the position and rotation data from? I hear you ask. Well, I took it from the feet. I modified it, of course, but in essence, the torso is animated using uh, keyframes from the feet. And that way I was able to ensure that the torso is always animated in full sync with the uh, with the gait. So, just an idea. I also added a uh, head look, very subtle, but it's the little things that make games look better. So when I'm stationary, the head is following the mouse, as you can see. Right? I added landing animations as well, so that long jumps uh, feel more natural. I'm still jumping way too high, but hey, I'm a fucking bionic beast. Let's not forget that, okay? I can jump as high as I want, okay? Next thing I added is this rotational step. Now, originally, you could um, rotate 360 degrees around the player when he wasn't moving, which was cool, but if he was facing the camera and uh, and you wanted to sprint forward, then depending on the current angle of the head, the head might turn left uh, to face the, uh, the, the movement direction and the rest of the body might turn right to face the movement direction, which looked ridiculous, as you can imagine. So I consulted Fortnite to see how they do it, and uh, they have the player rotate towards uh, where the mouse is looking. Each time, the angle between the mouse look and the front of the player is larger than a certain number of degrees. It looks to be around 70. 
So I went ahead and did the same. And I think it looks pretty legit. It's also very easy to do because the character body node does not ever rotate. It's the mesh uh, inside it that rotates. So we can just check for the uh, angular difference and trigger the step when the difference is larger than something. One last thing I wanted to touch on today is particles. You may see I have some particles here in the scene. I was playing around with particles in Godot 4 and I discovered some pretty impressive shit. I'll just mention one thing because I, I have a thing in about 10 minutes. The uh, GPU particles collision height field. It's a pretty cool node. This is basically a 3D box, which if you expand it to cover your scene, then the particles that are within the confines of this box will collide with everything that has collisions. Now, I'm only using this to a very subtle degree, but um, just imagine what you could do with it. Okay. This will do it for this episode. I shall continue to look for bugs in Godot 4 on my quest to migrate my game project onto it. And y'all have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you again quite soon. Peace.